Of course, the most, I would say, durable and complex one is this, which is kind of an espadrilla type of a sole. Here I used, uh, again, two types of fabric glued together. I did do the, the bias tape binding. And then I had, no, then I did the, excuse me, the braid. It's from a, I don't know if it's hemp, I'm not sure. It's a very sturdy rope. And I used to, I used to double, so there's six strands and it's always two together. Uh, I tried not to make knots because those would, you know, get very uneven. I had a safety pin right through here and then when you take it out it ends up quite flat like this. But also uh, I did like this with a rubber band and as you see if it's been braided for a while it really doesn't reopen so it's not a problem. And uh, I made a little video to show you how I came up with this and I really like the end result. Um, your foot's gonna be here, this is the sole. And yeah, this is actually my size, so I'm very curious to find out how durable this is gonna end up being. So I cut the size of sole I wanted as a template and put it on a big piece of styrofoam uh, with pins. And I just started pinning the braid uh, on its narrow side, standing up, so to say. As you see, I just started uh, wrapping it uh, at the ball of the foot, because that's where it needs to be wider. And I'm just, at this point, wrapping it and fixing it with pins. I'm not stitching anything, this is just to get to the shape. You see my braid is very long, so I don't have to add on anything to it. And I'm just here and there uh, putting in pins. I'm pressing it together, as you see, so that it becomes very sturdy. That is step one. Once I've done all the pinning, I started uh, sewing it together. I had at home this really huge needle. I have actually no idea what it's meant uh, for originally, but it served its purpose really well. It has a slightly flattened point. Um, which made uh, made it possible to get through the braids fairly easily. And I'm using this really sturdy, it's actually a shoemaking thread that I'm using here. I ordered it online. And uh, yeah, this is pretty tough work. It's not easy on your hands and fingers. Um, and as you see, I'm uh, using tools sometimes here to just kind of wiggle it through and get through. And you just have to continue doing that as much as you can. Um, don't get it caught in your pins. <laughs> and pull it fairly tight uh, so the sole gets sturdy. Just continue doing that. You use that template or whatever. Actually, the template is underneath, but I have another uh, sole from, cut from paper uh, where I can you know, make sure the shape becomes how I want it. You can, you can adjust that by tightening a little more or a little less. I thought my hands were gonna really hurt the next day, but they didn't. So it's not as bad as it looks maybe here. After doing that all over the sole, I took it off, uh, took the pins away, and I again uh, did some more stitching, not going all the way through the sole, but from about, I don't know, three, four braids into the sole to the edge, as you can see, like so. Um, that works really well, isn't half as hard, and I think it's gonna give it some extra stability yet again. And that's what we want. It also gives it a nice finish, finish at the edge, I think. 
after doing that, the soles really felt very, very sturdy. Very, uh, very much like a, an, actually even a little more sturdy than an espadrille that you would buy in a store. So I'm curious as to how they will end up being after wearing this shoe for a while. You see, this is not taking very long. There you go. And that's how I did my espadrille sole, the first one I ever made.